Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. And now, the Disney Parks Podcast infotainment segment. We know that coming to Walt Disney World can be very overwhelming with all the fast passes, the dining reservations, even getting from attraction to attraction can be extremely overwhelming. But we've got a friend that can help you make your next trip to Walt Disney World even more magical. It's Ramon and Theme Park Concierges. You can visit ThemeParkConcierges.com or call them at 407-257-9973. Ramon and his amazing team of VIP concierges will take care of you from the moment you arrive at the park until the moment you go back to your resort. They can take care of you for a four-hour time slot or a full day. It all depends on what you need. They can take care of your dining reservations, your fast passes, and even make sure that you find even more magic hidden in the Disney parks. Well, contact our friends, themeparkconcierges.com, or call 407-257-9973 and tell them your friends over at the Disney Parks Podcast sent you. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast. We're very glad that you're here. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day as Tony futzes with his hat <laughs> off camera. And if you're just listening, I apologize. But today, we're going to talk about... Um, a couple different things. Two rumors. Two two ru- well, rumors. It's not so much rumors, it's news, but it's not really news that's made the Disney wires yet. Yeah. Uh but one, the first thing we're gonna talk about is uh a pure rumor is yeah. uh apparently rumor has it, unsubstantiated, mm-hmm. all that unconfirmed. Stuff, unconfirmed, all that stuff the CYA yeah. that a new monorail fleet has been ordered for Walt Disney World. Say it ain't so, John. I'm saying that it might could possibly be (laughs) so. So a new monorail fleet would mean that we would get rid of the old, what do we got? Uh, Mark 7s? Yeah. Mark 8s? Yeah, something like that. So we would be getting brand new... Hopefully state-of-the-art. Monorails. Yeah. That would be amazing. Uh, We we wouldn't have doors opening in the middle of... uh, Transit, that'd be awesome. That would be a good feature to have. That would on. be a very good feature to have, especially when you're, yeah. you know, several stories up in the air right. going into the contemporary. Right. So the question, uh, you know, after reading the article, you know, and, uh, you know, the company that's going to make them and blah, 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 I was thinking to myself, you know, they spent all this money now on building the, <laughs> the Skyway. Would they expand the monorail now? I know it's great, yeah. You know, I don't know because you got to remember they are going to be building that hotel uh, over by Epcot. Would they make it go? Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, to that resort to to get those guests. Wow, that's a great thought. Yeah, and they wouldn't have to build a ton. Yeah, yeah. you know, depending on where they put the hotel. I mean, they mm-hmm. literally could put the hotel around that monorail. Yeah, but I mean. Or where the entrance is is on the other side of that, the station. Yeah, and they can just walk down the ramp. To the, it's a lot of thought. Yeah, but I, I need to correct myself. The Mark Six monorails okay. have been in service since 1989. Yikes! Since I graduated high school. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. I was 18 then. I'm 47 now. Yeah, that's a long time. It's a wee bit of, and it's <laughs> every day. Disneyland has gotten new ones. Right, <laughs> right. And, and and they use them only for, you know, an, an attraction. attraction. Yeah. We use them every day to yeah. carry a lot of people a lot of places. Yeah. Literally, like the one station at their downtown Disney, you have to have your ticket. Right. You go through bag check because you're actually entering the park. And uh, there's only two stops. 
It doesn't stop at any of the resorts. I mean, it goes through the Grand Ca- uh, California. Yeah. But it doesn't stop. I thought that was like the foolish <laughs> thing. I was like, wait a minute. Why would you do that? Yeah. We're going through, but there's no stop. Right. I, I was like, well, what's the point? Right. That seems like a waste. So the fleet, that rumor is, the fleet will be built by Bombardier of Canada. Uh, no, Bombardier. Excuse me. Yeah. Bombardier. Bombardier. Can- I can't read Canadian. Yeah. Bombardier of Canada, which is the same company that built the Mark VI trains for Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. And one of a very few companies in the Western Hemisphere uh, with the capability to build mass transit class monorails. Nice. So uh, the Mark VI fleet reportedly costs $3.5 million per train. $3.5 million per train? Yeah. Which would be around $7.5 million in today's dollars. So how many trains do we have in the fleet? Twelve. There was twelve. There was twelve. Now there's ten. Right. So we could probably get ten for mm-hmm. was it seventy five million dollars? Right? Million dollars. Million dollars. That's just a day's gate just for the you know, concessions alone. No, no, no. <laughs> That's just now the, the parking That's the fee, parking. The parking fee that they just implemented. That's right. That's a nice parking fee. That's right. That's right. It's a parking fee for a couple of days. Yeah. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Thank you. Enjoy one night the per one 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 night per uh, monorail. <laughs> right. Yeah. So apparently, um the line of automated monorails that uh Bombardier is currently marketing is called the Innova three hundred series. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they believe that would be uh, built, built for Disney, uh, but would certainly be fitted with custom features to make them very Disney esque. Oh yeah! And uh, in the article that I'm reading, there's a picture of the monorail. It looks go- it looks great. Yeah. Um, looks very much like a very sleek modern monorail. Um, right. Hopefully the doors won't pop open. That would be a problem. Yeah. Now I wonder if, uh, like in Vegas and even the Orlando airport, they're completely. You know, automated. There's no right. person driving that thing back and forth. I wonder with the new ones, uh, because uh, this is, uh, is saying that it would be an automated right. uh, monorail that series. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that would be uh, that would be the wisest thing. That that would take a lot of the human error out of it, mm-hmm. and I think that it would be um, it would allay a lot of the fears. You know, outside of the doors opening, I keep going yeah. back to it because I think that's part of the reason that this got this happened, the door opening thing. And um, in the article, they posit that that it could be part of the reason that they are not building the theater. Mm. And as much as I want a theater in the Magic Kingdom, I, I really could see not having a theater for a little while to get some new monorail trains. Yeah. We need those. Right. You know, theater's great, but we need new monorail trains. Yeah. So it's interesting. This is saying that these monorails um, could have uh, spacious interiors with flexible seating arrangements and then an intercar walkthrough for passenger flow and enhanced safety. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Design spaces for passengers with uh, restricted mobility. We have lots of scooters right. and wheelchairs. Right. Uh, advanced communication technology for enhanced reliability and intelligent power management for increased energy efficient. And I think that's the other reason that Disney never really expanded is the, the cost of electricity. Sure. I think the cost of electricity in Florida is expensive. Yeah, a little bit. As compared to other places. Um, so that, I, I think, is a reason that they never really expanded. One of the many reasons. Sure, but I mean, if you're taking, if you're taking and this is a scary thing, if you're taking 1989 technology... Mm-hmm. And you're replacing it with the most current technology. Wouldn't you be saving money anyway? Because the lights would be LED. Right. It would be it would be automated by a computer system that would, you know, the AI built into the computer system would probably factor in the most efficient use of trains and people moving and all right. that good stuff. Um, I think it's great if if they could do that and and then bring that all in for. Uh, for what they're talking, that would be amazing. I, the question, the first question when you said that they were thinking about having the interconnected walkways, that means mm. well, they should be able to have at least a security presence. Yeah. Somebody walking back and forth, if mm-hmm. not with some type of maybe a, 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 a sheriff or at mm-hmm. least somebody that's got yeah. more than just a stern 
stern flashlight. talking to finger. Yeah. I will point at you with my flashlight if you yeah. don't stop acting up. Yeah. Here's another uh, fact that uh, they have on their website is uh, mass transit capacity of more than 40,000 passengers per hour per direction. Wow. That, that, that's that's a, a lot. Yeah. So how many do we put through now? So that would mean like if, let's say, busy day, uh, yeah. Christmas time, 125,000 people in the park. Right. You can only take a couple of trains to get everybody out of the park. Yeah. If they, all took mo- or if they all took the monorail. Yeah. Bippity boppity. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, yeah. I think that would be super, super, yeah. uh, super efficient. And again, we here's, go back to the efficiency thing with yeah. the uh, with the money and the electricity. Yeah. Here's my fear uh, with this new. You have a fear about new technology. Yeah. Uh, just saving, about saving monorail. so that they'll remove all the seats. That this will be standing room only, uh, in order to fit more people in it. Ooh. Well, but they they already said they had flexible seating. Yeah. So I mean, they're they're. I don't think so. I, I, I don't think that that's going to be possible. For the airport tram, I can almost see it, but even mm-hmm. they have like a little front seating area. Yeah. I mean, you have a lot of people who are older yeah. or a lot of that people who to, are mobility yeah. challenged. Now, I'm not talking about in scooters. I'm just yeah. talking, you know, that's a long time yeah. to be standing. Mm-hmm. They have to factor that in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't think. Maybe they should. I tell you what they should do is just make the whole thing just, you know, individual swings like hammock swings. We could all sit in our hammock and swing. And... <laughs> I don't know if I'd get out. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd just be driving around all day, swinging yeah. back and forth, sleeping. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I don't know. This kind of got me excited today. Uh, yeah, you're a big monorail it? guy. Yeah. You uh, you, I can remember one of the, <laughs> I, I remember searching somewhere. I think I tried to find you a. A, a copy of the monorail thing and you're like oh yeah i got that on ebay last week yeah <laughs> so uh yeah. but you're one of those guys like you know you've got a monorail up here in the mm-hmm. in the archive yeah you've got a lot of monorail artwork and yeah. collectible stuff like that's your thing so yeah. I, when i saw this article i knew right. tony's got to be happy yeah camper. i got the the toronto rail right yeah i mean i'm telling you man yeah. it's just like they're getting tired of reading all your letters. Just like Jesus, this Tony <laughs> Casanova guy. Let's build them a monorail. Let's give them, you know, Pixar. Right. Let's give them yes. a giant Woody and a giant Buzz. See, that would be the other thing too. Theme them. You know, have you seen the monorails in in Tokyo? You know, with the little mouse, uh, mouse loop things. And right. It's all you know, dissified. Yeah. I'd love to see that come to ours. You know, don't th- make them plain and ugly like they are today. Yeah, no, I think that uh, I think when they said that they were going to th- the interiors would be distinctly Disney. Yeah, I think that they're probably building that in, and I, I think guest expectation is so high for that. I don't, mm. I don't think the cars themselves will be like it's the Pixar car, it's yeah. the Lilo and Stitch car. Yeah, but I think that it'll it'll certainly not that drastic. Yeah, but I think it'll certainly have Mickey's inside of it. And with the new design, it'll probably be a lot easier to wrap them. Yeah, you know, because yeah. we don't get we we get like one monorail gets wrapped every every season, right? You know, right? Unless it's Avengers, but I think now is what Incredibles, right? That's what the one is now. Uh, one's Nemo, one's uh, the Incredible. <laughs> one's Nemo. Yeah. Why is it Nemo? I have no idea. The one here? No, Disneyland. Oh yeah, Disneyland. Oh. But I'm talking like here. Here, I don't. Yeah, I think we have Incredibles. Yeah, we might. Right. Incredible summer, Incredibles two. They might have wrapped it, but um, yeah, I th- I think that would be phenomenal to do that and um, make sure that we have uh, enough theming to make it distinctly Disney and, yeah. and to make it different. I think LED lighting in the center. Yes. What I would love to see uh, when I thought about this is the whole thing you were talking about with the bus. Bus, yes. So the what, sorcerer coach. So what Tony's talking about is several months ago they had the sorcerer's coach. That where, was no, it was the destination D. <laughs> destination that was last year. Yeah. So tell them about it. Yeah. So they had this uh, prototype. They said no, this is not going to happen. This is just something that Imagineering came up with. Uh, the entire interior they had LED lights. Uh, they can change the color. Uh, they had then music. Uh, that they can program, and and the lights would change uh, to the music. It was just a completely decked out, high tech uh, bus. But they said uh, it'll probably never make it. Wouldn't it be nice if some of those uh, made items it onto the monorail? Made it onto the new monorail. Yeah. I mean that'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, what would be really cool 
and this is this is how I think. So you're on the bus and you're listening to Lion King and everything's mm-hmm. green and orange and yellow yeah. and you're da 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 da. Yeah. And then you swing by the Magic Kingdom yeah. and it changes and they pipe in the firework music as yeah. you swing by well, it. Well, that's true. That they could do that because the bus uh, is GPS aware. Right. And it would uh, say, you know, like, hey, we're approaching the. It, it kind of does that now. We're approaching the contemporary. Right. You know, the contemporary was built and blah, 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 blah. You know, could do the whole, like, like the monorail spiel, which is way off. Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> we're still... As soon as you leave the Magic Kingdom and start talking about <laughs> we're Bay Lake Tower. approaching Bay Lake Tower. I'm and I'm like, like uh, no, I'm still looking on Main Street USA. Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. It, it is the worst. It's GPS. the GPS. It's the worst. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I, I don't know why it doesn't get fixed and, uh, is the other part. And what would be really cool, you know, once they get the monorails in place and we're mm. way past yeah is is having them themed out when they go into the resorts more mm. you know having some of that contemporary style music and you're entering grand canyon station for yeah. disney's contemporary resort yeah you know you're yeah. in disney's polynesian resort right the other thing i would love to see them do is add another car what do you mean add another car i think I think we need more capacity. Yeah. Well, wouldn't that... I mean, they said trains. We don't know how many cars would be in a train. No. I'm, I, in the article that I read, I didn't... Yeah. Um, it's really not a good picture of a complete train. Well, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This has seven, and I think our monorails only have four. Right. Four compartments. Right. So... Um, yeah, I th- I th- the 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 problem with my adding more cars is you then have to make stations longer, the platforms. True. Otherwise, how are you going to get people onto those last cars unless there is that walkthrough, right? Where you would get on the last one and then just walk uh, onto the right. other one. But again, the other thing is if they're talking forty thousand guests, mm-hmm. we don't know. I mean, they have to, if that's the number they're throwing out. Yeah. Then they have to have thought about throughput and how many trains, Mm -hmm. how many cars per train, what time of day, you know. So maybe they don't necessarily have to adjust that much. And like the contemporary resort, there's a lot of space that they're not using. Yeah. I think on all the platforms, they have some extra space that they're Mm -hmm. just not using. Right. But, you know, what do I know? Just a couple knuckleheads talking Disney stuff here. Yeah. All right. So you want to move on to the next one? Sure. So let's talk about the next piece of... Of it's not rumor, it's it's the legit, patent. but we don't know exactly where they're going to yeah. use this patent. But we have a pretty strong <laughs> yeah, idea. Let me see if I can uh, pull out that article. All right. Uh, let's see. Let me just do a quick search. I got it right here. I, you, yeah, I got it. I just didn't want to take oh, the. I just oh. didn't want to take your. Heat, oh, you can so. do it while I'm, while I'm looking. Okay, so Disney filed a patent. News broke a few days ago. Yep. Filed a pass patent for what they are calling, and I'm quoting here, an immersive multimedia hotel room show. So, I I don't know what hotel I don't know what hotel that could be for. What do you think, Tony? Luke, I am your father. Brush your teeth before you go to sleep. You know, I mean, I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah. And then you have, like, Darth Vader over your bed. I'd freak out. But anyway, so with a fully immersive, potentially Star Wars hotel room. uh, uh, Well, excuse me. Let me rephrase that. We know that we're getting a fully immersive Star Wars hotel. Uh, With that in mind, Mm -hmm. there's been a patent published by Disney Enterprises Incorporated entitled Multimedia System for the Transforming Any Room into a Show Environment. (laughs) Nice. Just rolls off the tongue. Sure. It outlines a system in which any room can be converted into an immersive entertainment experience with an emphasis on hotel rooms. Okay. So uh, I know you don't have a picture, and most people will be be listening to us, but... Imagine uh, two walls of a hotel room, and then on one wall there's a bookshelf and a nightstand with a lamp, and on the yeah. other wall, we can throw that up. It's completely blank, right? And basically, the wall that's completely blank would be 
like a projection screen, and they would be projecting onto that wall the story that they want you to be a part of. And from your perspective, the story is happening all around you. So not only are you getting the projection on the wall that you're staring at, the items in the room would also quote, come to life or be a part of the experience. So let's just say hypothetically. Yeah, that, so I have the one figure up on gotcha. it so they can see it. So let's just say hypothetically that you're in your room and you're having you're having a really cool evening and all of a sudden um, R2-D2 in your room, a full-size R2-D2 wakes up and then starts projecting on the wall, yeah. you know, a, a picture of... Any, a message or yeah, a mission that you have to do. Insert Star Wars character yeah. here. It says, uh, uh, good, good evening, uh, recruit. We've got a, an incredible, uh, incredibly important uh, uh, mission for you. Uh, it's going to be dangerous. Uh, you're going to have to infiltrate the, uh, the, the Imperial, whatever they're calling it. Right. And you have to go do this, this, and this, and this. And it all starts at 0700, which is 7 o'clock. Uh, your whatever and then and then r2d2 turns off and then like right. there's a little bb8 on the nightstand and it starts starts talking yeah. and bb8 and r2 start talking together so you're basically being surrounded by the droids talking yeah and that's that's just my feeble mind coming up with ideas yeah i i i <laughs> here here all right, listen. I I love technology. You know that. I love when shocking. I love when uh, technology can be put uh, to good use, and I think this is probably a good example of it. My concern is um, maintenance of this. This is going to be a lot of tech mm -hmm. in a hotel, and not just for a couple of rooms, but if they do the entire hotel. You know, we're talking 350, 400 rooms possibly right. from what we're hearing. Right. That is a lot of technology in those rooms. I mean, we were at Bay Lake Tower and couldn't get the TV and the refrigerator to work. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so how, how are they going to maintain? We, we were in the Grand Floor and we couldn't get a picture hung. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? A yeah. mirror. Couldn't get a mirror hung. Yeah. Couldn't Mirrors get a, on the ground. Yeah. How are they going to maintain all of this, I mean, I see like 200 things that uh, are possible fail points, right. you know, in this room that they're showing on this image. So I have concern. <laughs> what if the room breaks? Yeah, breaks or, you know, takes over. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I mean, the first thought is, well, you know, if it goes down, and it doesn't work, nobody's going to see it because it's not functioning. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is you got all these people who are paying X amount of dollars. A lot of money. And trust me, if I'm spending that kind of money and mm -hmm. I'm being sold on the fact that my room is going to transform into the Death Star, yeah. just not to, not to mince any words, but by God, it better change into the Death Star. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry the technology wasn't working. Well, I'm sorry then I expect to be compensated. Yeah. You know, I mean... But all that to say, that's, Disney could be using enough general technology like mm -hmm. whatever the projector unit they're using, using could be, you know, they have 400 rooms, so they buy 800 projectors. Right. You know, and when one breaks, they, re, you know, they replace it. But we all know Disney's not going to do that. Yeah. But I'm just saying, that's, it would seem to me that they would want to have redundancy built in. Oh, a lot of it. You know, and then have backups for the redundancy. Yeah. It's a hell of a challenge, yeah. but if they can pull it off and do it well, I mean. Right. And, uh, you know, will the rooms really not have windows? You know, we keep hearing that, that, you know, when you look out a window. Right. And I'm using my air quotes because it may not be a window. It'll right. just be, you know, something that they want to call space. Uh, first of all, then that leaves, uh, you know, a possible egress out of my I got to get out of the building equation, <laughs> you know. True, but in most Disney resorts, if you're on the 15th floor, you're not going to egress out of your window oh, anyway. At least you have the balcony. You can at least get out there and get, True. you know. True, but who's to say there's not a balcony here? That's true. We you, don't. Even we though don't they know. say it's windowless. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we don't know that yet. <clears throat> we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. But the the thinking behind it, the 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 thought behind it is very exciting. I mean, it would be amazing to have different parts of your room become active and interactive and you know, just the thought of taking it and being able to go into the to the land, Star Wars land to be able to to take your story from your from your bedroom to your mm-hmm. you know, to your experience. So let me ask you this question. Uh, what about fatigue? Guest fatigue. So yeah. you're you're immersed in Star Wars and right. standing in line and you're hot and you're tired and your kids are being pains. Yeah. And then you come back to the hotel room and all you really want to do is just relax. And then all of a sudden it's like and you're like, oh God, can we yeah. turn this off? Yeah. There needs to be a yeah, there needs to be. I a, don't want to play today. Switch. Yes, green. green. I, I I opt out. Yeah, like Foga to Chow. Yeah, uh, I'm hungry. I'm not hungry. Yeah. Start, stop. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that's probably built in too. But I think you would be missing a lot of the the experience. But hey, I mean, I would think that people would get a little fatigued of it if you're. But if you're only doing it for four days, right. I could do anything for four days. As long as yeah. I'm getting a, a yeah. top level experience. And so some of the things that they're saying that the system would generally control is a display device, which could be a television or something like it. Sure. Uh, let, let's call it a what they call it like on Star Trek or Star Wars, uh, uh, you know, on screen computer on screen. Right. <laughs> you know that. Would right. Be pretty well, kind of like the mirrors that they have, where you mm. can press a button and it turns yeah. into a TV. Uh, a video projector. Uh, because we think they're going to project stuff onto the walls. Right. An audio system, uh, one or more speakers. Well, thank you for that. And other show components, uh, lights, uh, maybe including even black lights, a fan, a me- mechanical device, right. uh, such as mechanical props, electrical devices, such as illusionary props, and so on. Uh, oh, it's going to do car tricks? Yeah, maybe. Uh, the media content is uh, preferred for the room. Uh, or it's provided in real time to suit the room. Nice. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a challenge technologically speaking, but dude, it's going to be, I mean, it's got to be worth the expense. Yeah. Well, here's another interesting statement too. The entire room can be transformed into an augmented video and played on the display. What do you mean, play it on the display? That's well, the display on the wall. Oh, yeah. We can display an augmented video. You know, you can put it on your... Does that mean we can get life-size Stacy's? <laughs> it's Stacy and the must-dos. <laughs> Here's what you must do in space. <laughs> the 10 things to do oh in space. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what they should do. They should do that. I'm and... writing Stacy. <laughs> I'm going to tell her to uh, approach Disney with it. And then, and then we could pause the video and we could all stand yeah. there and take pictures with Stacy. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. That'd be awesome. We that should would totally, be, I, totally I'm, I have an email address. I'm going to email her. Yeah, definitely do that. <clears throat> hey, Stacy, here's an idea I want you to pitch to Disney. <laughs> when they build that Star Wars hotel, you want to do the 10 things to do in space. <laughs> but she's got to wear the slave yeah. lay outfit. <laughs> and... And, the and you buns. have to be in the augmented reality. <laughs> and you have to have a sticky bun here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna write her. You should. That'd I am. You, you know me. Tell I love her, writing tell her people. We have this idea. Yeah. Uh, I think this is awesome. Yeah. And and and, in, and then the big question is, as we kind of start winding down here, is this the future for uh, for hotel rooms? Could be. You know. Could be. We got Star Wars. Uh, Marvel could be the next big thing. Well, Airbnb. All right. So the hotel. Uh, I think industry is changing a little bit because Airbnb now has Airbnb experiences. So you're not just booking a room somewhere. You're booking an entire experience. Uh, you know, it could be in Italy where you're making pasta. It could be in, you know, Germany where you're making hot dogs. It could be... So they're becoming a travel agency. Kind of, sort of, yeah. But yeah. I think you're living in, you know, somebody's house or room or whatever. It's not a hotel. Right. Uh, but... There's an experience component. It's like an adventure by Disney. You know, there's the right. hotel and then the experience. The extra add-on yeah. experience. It's like a short excursion yeah. on a cruise. So I think those kind of things are now becoming more popular. I mean, especially if Airbnb sure. has turned their focus on it. Sure. Uh, there's got to be, you know, a reason for it. Right. So I think the experience travel, 
you know, maybe Eisner was ahead of his time, you know, when he came up with uh, the Disney Institute and that people wanted uh, ed- edutainment. You know, they wanted right. to come on vacation and uh, not only get relaxed and rejuvenated, but maybe get enriched with uh, education and knowledge. Right. You know, they had the, the cartoons uh, studio, they had the, the radio station, the cooking, the wine, seminar, all that stuff. He might have been ahead of his time. Yeah. I'm sure it was. I mean, he he was a smart man, uh, but I think Disney also has positioned themselves with some of the new renovations they've made in the last five years. Mm-hmm. The Pirate and Princess rooms, yeah, uh, all of the uh, art of animation rooms. You right. know, it wouldn't take very much to add another component. Oh, sure. To add some of this, build it in. It wouldn't take all that much. I could see uh, the new uh, Hotel of Caribbean Beach being a, a pirate's hotel. Yeah. Totally, you know, to have the the, the real pirate yeah. of so the Caribbean experience, yeah. uh, I could see them transforming. And here's the other thing: the Pop Century rooms, they're yeah. all white. Yeah. If you were going to start a project from the ground up, mm. white is a great canvas to yeah, start with. Sure. And so you could actually have video simple if the if they if this technology works out and they could do it and replicate it and and get it cheap enough. They literally could go in and just retrofit the rooms with right. one little projector that when you get there, you know, balloons fly. And yeah. very much like the, uh, I know you haven't been on a cruise, but the uh, the magical portals. Mm. Right. You know, when you're... in videos. Yeah. It? So you're, you know, you've got a camera and yeah. then periodically a Disney character will fly by. You can yeah. do the same thing on the wall. I mean, yeah. you could do a, a virtual window. It'd be nice if like you go into the room, there's a, a touch pad or something and you say, Hey, listen, I like this character, this character, this character, yep. this character. And those are the characters then that, you know, will get projected in your room during yep. your stay. Your wake up call is, you know. is, is Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Mickey Mouse. Well, or Hey guys, good morning. I think you could do that now. Yeah. Well, not a phone call. I'm talking <laughs> yeah. like the projector yeah. kicks on. Yeah. And an augmented and the, Mickey is and standing the light, in the... and the lights <laughs> come up to you know where it's not like instantly right. awake, but you know, uh, <laughs> I can't yeah. get those notes. <laughs> but you know, you, you hear it slowly get softer, and then there's right. Mickey. Like, good morning, everybody. Welcome to a brand new day. <laughs> what park are you going to? Are you going to yeah. have fun? You know, that would be yeah. cool. That'd be fantastic. Uh, you know, then they do the stitch one, and, and basically yeah. they put the rumble seat under the bed where he's jumping on the bed. <laughs> Terrify everybody, yeah. or <laughs> yeah. I'll take the rumble. Yeah, more, more rumble. <laughs> hey, hang yeah. on, hang on. Yeah, okay. I think the cast members are going to be, uh, you know, really key, uh, you know, to this whole trick being pulled off. You know, they're all going to have to be all in. You know, the front desk people are going to have to be in in the, you know, a Star Wars costume. You know, valet, bell services, housekeeping. Everybody's going to have to play, you know, a role. They're, it's going to be like live theatrics. Right. You know. And, um, and therein lies the, the real crux of the matter. Yeah. I mean, can they pull that off? I don't know. You know, being in the room and having the technology, that's one part. Right. The other part is that human component. And right. can they pull that off? And you're going to have to have cast members walking around in costume. Yeah, sure. Uh, it was funny. I, I have a point. Try, help me to remember because I'll forget uh, cast members. Uh, cast members are the linchpin. Um, but Sarah had uh, her Relay for Life event this mm. week. And they had, I, I don't know if he was a guy from the 501st. Okay. I've got to think that he was because his outfit was on point. It was either that or he had a connection with somebody in casting and he was allowed to take that suit outside wow. of the park. It was spot on Stormtrooper. And Buddy, he was a Pied Piper. The whole time really? I was there when he was in costume, he was just a Pied Piper. Because the kids were just like, could not get enough of him. Right. And they were trying to get him to talk and stuff. And I think that he had a built-in speaker system because he had a headphone, you know. Right. And uh, I was just, it was just a really cool thing. And this is, this is just a Relay for Life event. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to have this... You know, if you're going to make me try to believe that I'm in a spaceport, then you're going to have to have yeah. those characters walking around. Right. And when I say the the linchpin is going to be the cast members, here's the thing, and this is this is going to kind of dovetail us into the, into I guess the last thing. We only got a few more minutes left. 
The cast members have always been the linchpin to the Disney experience. Yes. And I don't know why, you know, traditions has gone to like basically just a mention. Yeah. And and the the pay dispute and mm-hmm. the the strike and all the things Dis, Disney's forgotten that they're special not because they have the commodity on unique because mm-hmm. they don't Right. Not because they have the commodity on really cool family fun, because they don't. Right. Not because they have the commodity on great intellectual property, because they don't. Yeah. It's amazing. Don't get me wrong. Right. But the thing is, Disney cast members have always been the difference maker, mm-hmm. because those magical experiences don't happen on attractions. Yeah. They happen with cast members. Right. And there's been so little attention given to them for so long. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be very difficult unless they're compensated appropriately. Mm-hmm. They're incentivized appropriately. Yeah. And like you said, you're 150% correct. Buy-in. Yeah. Because these cast members are not going to be the, hi, welcome to the Disney Star Wars Hotel. Yeah. Now are welcome you checking home. in? The not, welcome home bullshit. Uh, welcome away. home. Yeah. It's going to have to be, yeah. you know, Hello. Are you are you with the first order? Yeah. You know, how are my rebels doing today? It's right. going to literally have to be a completely different paradigm. Yeah, from the minute you pull up. Yeah. So it's going to have to be a radical change. And can I'm I, not. Can I park your ship for you, sir? Correct. And I yeah. I am not 100 percent sold out. The technology is going to work. They're smart mm-hmm. people. They'll figure it out. They'll either figure it out or they'll dumb it down. Yeah. To where it's still friggin' awesome. Right. You know, they're going to It'll charge be just enough to make it awesome. They'll charge five, six hundred dollars a right. night. They'll get it because we're idiots. And for those of you who are, well, this is the Patreon, so I don't have to yeah. worry about upsetting anybody. Right. Because we're crazy about Disney, and I don't mean idiots in a bad way, but yeah. we'll pay it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Whether we, it's it's the bee's knees or whether it's not, because yeah. it's a Disney and b it's Star Wars, and yeah. who doesn't want to spend the night in a Star Wars hotel? <laughs> but the thing is, right. it's the that interactive experience if i come out of my hotel room and there's a wookie walking down and there's some jawas running by and there's that little hammerhead dude and a little robot passes by when i'm in the lobby i will literally bow down on my knees and cry holy yeah they should uh they should have like uh i robots cleaning the carpeting in the hallway zumba's ladies and gentlemen zumba yeah it's zumba world You know, and I, I think that's what they're going to have to do. If if they're going to invest the money and the resources, yeah. that, they have to spend the money on the cast members. I, and like I said, I, it's got to be full on, full on experience. You know, cast members, technology, uh, you know, the whole thing. It, right. you, you have to feel like you're there. Right. Uh, that's the only way they'll pull this off and make and make it successful. I don't think they. I don't think you can make this. Uh, I hate to say it, but half-assed. Correct. Um, you're gonna have to be either all in or you're not in. You know. Right. Because um, that's what people are gonna be expecting. I, that's what I'm expecting. Right. Absolutely. I step out of my car. I want to feel like I am on another planet. The expectations are going to be completely unique for yeah. this resort. Yeah. Uh, so much so to even the experience, like how you pull into the resort needs to be different. Mm. Like you need to pull into something yeah. to where you are surrounded from the right. moment that you you pull your ship in, yeah. you dock where you bring your car to, right. and then how your car is, it's got to be brought to you. Like there has to be that valet that's the only way to park your car. Yeah. Because there shouldn't be any right. walking into the hotel because it's yeah. going to break the experience, yeah. in my opinion. What do I right. know? Uh, we would love to know what you think. Uh, let us know at DisneyParksPodcast at gmail.com. You can find us, uh, you guys know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, excuse me, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Disney Parks Podcast, Twitter, Disney Podcaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can always leave us a comment in the show notes here. And uh, we cannot wait to hear what you guys think about, A, the new Star Wars uh, hotel the patent that may or may not be part of that, right. and the new monorail trains that were coming. Yes. So before we call it a day, David Maruka said, I'm waiting for the Friday the 13th experience. <laughs> yeah, he wants to be chased all weekend by <laughs> Jason. That's a thing, though, isn't it? Doesn't, yeah, isn't there it. Isn't there a place that's doing that? You, you do like a weekend experience. You go up to a, a lake that's Crystal Lake, and you... I think that's a thing now. I was at the real Friday the 13th Lake. 
Chris, yeah, what's it called? It's a Boy Scout camp. It's Novi Bosco. Oh, jeez. God, can you imagine being a Boy Scout after that movie came out? Yeah. Who, let's go swimming. <laughs> let's, let's go to camp. <laughs> no. No. Like, like uh, you know, the knife through, you know, in the lane. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I've been in that cottage. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah, awesome. I know where that bed is. I'm that's like, awesome. I'm, freak I'm not out. sleeping in that bed. A little freaky deaky. Yeah. Well, look, here's the Listen, thing. Listen, if you want the Friday the 13th, you have to go over to the other place down yeah. the road. I am excited about Stranger Things coming yeah. to Hollywood Horror Nights. Mm. I'm very excited about that. Um, so you got anything else you want to add to that, I my got, friend? I got nothing. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys watching. We appreciate you guys taking the time. And we certainly, really honestly, appreciate you guys being our Patreons. We love you guys. And uh, we couldn't do what we do without you guys. All right? Yeah. And with that, we'll see, see you in the, the parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a out of the blue Fate steps in and sees you through.